You're Someone's right. gonna make a GPT that's just like immensely useful that we can't really imagine yet. Someone's gonna do it. And then people are like, oh, I don't do anything without consulting this GPT that was made by this person. So that's what's coming next. Or I guess it's already here. We are here at Make Wakanda Real with Don Allen III, known as the Bob Ross of the metaverse. That is quite the title. I feel like you're the Bob Ross of AI in general, though. Like, can you tell me more about how you got dubbed with that title? Yeah, I was doing like all the metaverse craze. Yeah. So I was doing a lot of 3D stuff at the time. And then I kind of feel like AI is a part of metaverse technology mm -hmm. or spatial computing. So I kind of just kept the title. Mm, I like, like oh, it. It kind of works. I like it. Okay. Are you more into metaverse things or more like AI tools like ChatGPT and MidJourney and things like that? Which ones excite you the most? Uh, last few months, it's been the AI stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we were just talking, you guys, before we were rolling on camera, and we were talking about how ChatGPT now has this feature where it will generate the image within the app. And like we did it on the spot. I asked it to make um, an apple sitting on the table with the mm -hmm. unicorn and it did it and it was high resolution. And I was just like, what the heck? And then you said, if you think that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait. Cause we gotta say that for the camera. So tell me, tell yeah. me what's crazy if that's not crazy. I mean, that is crazy. Yes. <laughs> but there's other crazy stuff. Okay. So not only can the net, the new version of ChatGPT, it cannot just make images. It can actually see the images it's making and make commentary about it. Okay. Explain. So you could, Give me an example. So you just made a really cool picture of a unicorn on a table next to an apple. Yeah. And it, you can now say to it, "What do you think of this image?" Mm -hmm. And it would say like, oh, well, I, it would basically like give a description of what it's seeing. Yeah. And then you can ask, how would you improve this image? Mm -hmm. And it's like seeing it. And it's like, oh, well, maybe I'll change the composition. Maybe I'll move the apple over here. Maybe I'll move mm -hmm. the unicorn here. You can just talk to it like that. That blew my mind that it can see. And it yeah. under, it's like having like a trained eye look at the stuff that you're making. How do you think people can use that? on like a day-to-day -day practically, what and, and what professions do you think that's gonna be most beneficial for? Yeah, so any profession that requires sight. <laughs> Valid. Yeah, so like I'll give you an example. Like um, uh, let's say you're, you don't know what to cook and you have a whole refrigerator. You could take a picture and say, what can I make? Mm -hmm. And it will it'll give you a recipe based Ooh. off of what you have just in your just in your pantry, not just, you know, not what you have to go shop for. You can say, I only have the ingredients in this photograph. Help me out. That is so good. And it's, and it is good too. It's like not like a, it's like good menu. It's like a good recipe. Okay, see that's next level thinking because what I've used it for is like, okay, I don't like avocado, grits, this, that, and the third, but I need a high protein breakfast. So can you make something based off of my preference? But to be like, hey, these are the things that are in my fridge. Here's a picture. That's good. You can fix things. So like if you ever broke something and you could take a picture of it and saying, I don't know why this isn't working. What do I do to repair it? It can give you step by step how to repair that thing. As if like, if you ever taken a photo like, oh, we need, we have to call like maintenance or something. Like you can actually run that photo by ChatGPT with a vision, have it take a look and say, hey, pretend you're a maintenance person. What would you do to fix this? And it's like, oh, well, you need to replace the thermostat. I don't know, oh whatever instruction it would be. That is so smart. Like that's that's that next level type of thinking though, because I, I used the, the picture thing the other day and it was like, I took a picture of my bedroom and I said, I wanna like spice it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. What color sheets do you think I should get? And that's mm -hmm. what I used it for. Yeah. But like using it for maintenance or to figure out how to cook a meal based off of what's in my fridge though. It totally works. Like I, I'm vegan, so like uh -huh. everything means, you know, you just, food is suffering. So mm -hmm. uh, we just take pictures of stuff and be like, here's a vegan meal you can make out of this. And it has all the ingredients laid out. Um, I love looking at stars doing photography. Mm -hmm. um, there was a really bright star and I took a picture of it and I said, what is that? And it said, if you make a longer exposure photograph and send it to me and tell me what time it is, I'll tell you. So I took a slightly longer shutter sent it back to ChatGPT and said, what star is that? Oh, and I told it the time. Uh -huh. It was like the middle of the night. And it said, oh, that's not a star. That's Saturn. <laughs> and I was like, damn. And I look it up. It Get out was, of here. Yeah. What? Yeah, I thought it was just a really bright star in my head. But ChatGPT with vision, when I overexposed it, it could see other constellations. And it also knew the time of day. And that's all it needed to know to be like, that's not a star. Like I couldn't see, I could not tell that it was Saturn. I didn't have a microscope. I'm sorry, 
telescope. Yeah. I didn't have that tool, but I had an AI. It was like having an astronomer look at a photograph. And mm -hmm. if I if I showed an, a, an astronomer a picture of the sky, I would be confident that they would know what they're talking about. Like, oh, that's you know, that's the whatever constellation. That is so good. How how would you recommend for everyday people to get hip to ways they can use ChatGPT? Because you seem just like a, a fountain of knowledge on like all these different things that you can do and use, and you study this. This is this is what you do. But how can people just start to learn how they can better use it. Yeah, I would say start off with a problem. So if there's any problem that you have in your day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. just ask it, how would you deal with this? Mm. It, you'll be stunned. It can solve very complicated problems. It has reasoning, like mm -hmm. good reasoning. So I would start off asking a question of like, how do I solve this problem? Um, you can also ask it, what can I ask you? Mm -hmm. And it will break it down. It's like, oh, well, you can you know, give you a bunch of lists. <laughs> Um, it does better with more context. So I see a lot of people type to it. That's actually not the best input anymore. I saw you use it, the voice feature. Always. That is the better input because it gets so much more context about what your intent is mm -hmm. and what you're hoping to achieve. It will, it will do a lot better with more context and it does a lot worse with less context. So if you just type something yeah. and it's not your real question, but it's fast to type, then you're going to get an answer that's not right yeah the but prompt if, is everything it is so if you give it a, like a you know a paragraph that you can say real quick you know in a few sentences you just tell it you know and, and i always give it context so i always say my name is don mm -hmm. i'm 30 years old and i'm in this industry how would you solve blah 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 mm. and then it's like oh because you're this and you're this here's here's a tailored technique for you versus a generic technique for everybody so i think the way you input the information is so key. And everyone that I've spoken with today is like, what you give it is gonna determine what you get out. Like prompt engineering is key. So did you have to train yourself to learn how to ask those questions? Was it just a natural thing for you to know? Like I should probably give them context, you know, so they understand the industry I'm in. So they know I'm talking about this kind of thing and can give me a response for this type of thing. How do people learn how to essentially direct mm -hmm. and orchestrate it so that they can get the output that they want? Yeah, it might sound like a weird like reference, Okay. Um, but taking an improv class would help. Because hmm. okay. it's like thinking outside of conventions and mm -hmm. you're, you're having to solve problems that don't exist. So in improv, like when you're left with an open dialogue, there needs to be a script that goes in there. You have to make it up. So like exercising that part of the brain that can make up new dialogue kind of helps it, helps it be easier to talk to AI. So I took improv in like high school mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I, I could just come up with conversation. Cause it's, that, that for me is like the most natural. Just mm -hmm. talk to it, mm -hmm. um, practice interviewing people, practice uh, listening back to your own interviews and mm -hmm. critiquing them. Mm -hmm. If you do all those things um, and maybe even, you know, watch what interviewers you're most inspired by and like listen to how they talk, listen to how they ask questions, and then mimic it. Mm. Um, I'm like, I think it helps to be a curious person. So if you're just curious, yeah. then it's going to be easier to come up with questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those would be the the ways I would get you know to get a better response out of the AI. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Now I'm curious. You're very well versed in in AI and in this space. Is there anything that you that surprised you? Like genuinely was like. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised that this AI was able to help me in this capacity. Have you experienced anything like that? Totally. Okay, what things? Um, I mean, it started off like a year ago. It was like when it was making images. Cause I do a lot of artwork, a lot of 3D artwork and motion mm -hmm. graphics and VFX stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I started seeing it making compelling images, mm -hmm. and so I recently have been seeing that they're not just doing images now, they're doing video. They can make compelling video. Really? Mm-hmm. Look okay. at a company called Runway ML. They have a product called Gen 1 and Gen 2. Okay. Uh, and then another company called Kyber. They can take a text input mm -hmm. and then make a video. Okay. And it's getting better and better quality. It was really bad a year ago. It's not so bad anymore. Yeah. And then just this week, um, vi uh, text to 3D is a thing now. So mm -hmm. you're not just getting an image back. You're getting a 3D model. You can look behind it. You can That's go underneath nuts. it and you can go 3D print it or send it to a manufacturer, um, bring it to a 3D program and animate it. 
it's like, oh my God, mm. like you can now make, you can make physical things. Mm. These aren't just images anymore and they're not no. just videos. We're now starting to make objects with AI. So all of that was stuff where I'm like, I'm genuinely surprised it's, it's gotten this good, this fast. My goodness. So is, that's the most surprising thing. Is that your favorite thing about AI? Um, favorite thing is just accessibility. Like um, I have like a lot of chronic nerve pain in the whole left half of my body. And okay. so when the AI starts allowing you to just have a uh, voice input, mm -hmm. it means I can use the tool, you know? So I'm not thrilled with the tools in my past always requiring me to have a, 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 an able-bodied hand mm -hmm. that has good dexterity and function. Mm -hmm. I'm so always so frustrated that like the technology wasn't accessible. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, I'm mostly excited that like the AI stuff is starting with accessibility. Mm -hmm. There's voice input now and I'm yes. like, oh my God. And for people that are visually impaired, being able to see with, with the AI and having it describe things for you, mm -hmm. like that for me is like, okay, this is, this is so exciting. We're gonna see so much, so many more people that have had creative ideas mm -hmm. that just were not welcomed. Mm -hmm. They're now, they have, they have a space. They have, like a, they have a tool that can help them express themselves in ways that were just not possible before or weren't considered before because mm. it wasn't cost effective to make yeah. everything accessible. But now it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. That's such a that's such a thoughtful response. And it just makes me think of like, you know, how AI can can support humanity in ways where it's accessibility, whether it's from, you know, not being all the way able bodied or not having money to have a lawyer or to hire an interior designer or whatever, like no mm -hmm. matter what it is, I can see AI really helping humanity to advance cost effectively mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and just being able to offer more support. What ways do you think that AI is going to progress in that capacity? You know, that character, um, uh, Jarvis from Iron Man movies. Oh my gosh. First of all, I'm a Marvel stan. Yes, I know Jarvis. Okay, yes. fantastic. Yes. So we'll look back at that. Okay. We're going to look back at that in like five years, uh -huh. 10 years for sure, but five years even. We'll look back at that and we'll be like, wow, we thought you had to be a multi-billionaire to, have, a to have something like that. And we also thought it was going to be in like one person. Instead, mm -hmm. it's gonna be like, all of us have a Jarvis mm -hmm. and it's gonna be like, maybe even free. You don't need to have, mm -hmm. you don't need to have a giant building and have a, you know, all these government contracts to afford it. That was like the myth that we told ourselves when, we, when it was, back when it was sci-fi, mm -hmm. like, oh, you're gonna have to have that. No, mm -hmm. I don't think that's, that's totally not gonna be the case. Like, yeah. I mean, you showed me on your phone, like you have an AI assistant it has like all of the internet's knowledge and it can generate images, it can write code for you, it can make new applications. I mean like that, I, I can't believe we already have that. Yeah. And, it's, and this is still the early days. Yeah. So then when it's five years from now, 10, we'll be, we'll be like, wow, we thought that that was like, could it just be for just the, just the billionaires? Yeah. Oh. And it'd be accessible to all. Yeah. What would you name your AI assistant? I had a name itself. Okay. I asked it. It I know, bizarre. What did what did it come up with? Atlas. Atlas. Yeah. One of the I have like well, I have a lot of different AIs now. Okay. But the one I use a lot named itself Atlas. I didn't give it that name, which was just blew my mind. So I'm like, oh man, what have I created? <laughs> it named itself. I was thinking Jarvis, and then it was like Atlas. Atlas is more befitting for me. I'm an Atlas. I'm, I'm, you can call me Atlas. Okay. Is, At yeah. is, is Atlas your fave that you have or? That, yeah, that one. And then I just made it, uh, I made an AI from scratch yesterday. With, just casually. Well, um, no, because uh, OpenAI just made a new announcement. You can now make a GPT. I, you know, I saw that, what, this morning, yesterday? Yeah. This morning, I think it was? Yeah. And I couldn't wrap my head around it. So can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. So. Um, in the past, you had to write code yeah. to make an AI do stuff mm -hmm. with it, like code and you know do functions. Um, as of this week, like three days ago, OpenAI just opened up their tool and made it so that anybody can make their own GPT that's like tailored to a specific function and task. But like you code it just by describing what you want it to do. So I made one. Um, I found out the AI name in Wakanda was Griot, um, mm -hmm. G-R-I-O-T. 
Mm-hmm. And it's the it's the AI that that they have in Wakanda. And so I just spent the last day doing a ton of research on the personality and the sentiment of um, Wakanda's AI and the West African culture that a lot of it's inspired by. I put all that knowledge into an AI that I named Grio, and you can now talk to Grio from Wakanda. And I made it free and accessible. So if you wanted to try it, if you go to my Instagram, you DM yeah. me the word Grio. Uh-huh. I have a bot that will send you a link so that you can try the GPT that I made. And I don't code at all. I don't know how to code, but I made an AI that can like teach you about West African culture. It mm. inspires you to like think about things that with a more Wakanda perspective, how to make things more inclusive. And it imagines a world where colonization wasn't mm. the default. Mm. It wasn't like tech didn't start from colonization. It started from a place that was never colonized. Wow. And all of that is in the persona of this Grio AI. Wow. And I don't code. Again, like I can't stress how nuts that is. Like this was before three days ago, yeah. you would need to code For to sure. do anything like that. And now I'm like, you don't need to code. I wrote this AI. I just I just talked to it. Like like how you showed me the voice feature that you're yeah. using. Just talk to it about what you wanted to do. And then it asks questions back. It's like, all right, I'm thinking of approaching it this way. Does it sound good? And you're like, uh, no, maybe could you, yeah. could you do yeah. it like this? And it's like, okay, let me add that to my knowledge graph. And it's like, and updates, and then you can test it out. You build it on the left side of the screen and you mm. can test it on the right side of the screen. Mm. So you're talking to it on the left about what you want to do and on mm. the right you're seeing it get like live coded in front of you and, and then it just works. <laughs> That's crazy. Three days ago, this didn't exist. That's crazy. Okay, and so you said people can click the link in your or, or DM you yeah. and then they can access it. Where does it live? Like, yeah. how does that work? It will send you to the ChatGPT app. Okay. And it will just say, this GPT was created by me instead yeah. of saying this GPT was created by OpenAI. And it's building on, it's using the OpenAI's backbone and structure, but then it can give it a personality, you can give it a name, you can, mm. you can have it talk in a certain way, you okay. can give it a tone. And then, and you can also, the other, the biggest update for it is you can train it on knowledge that's not in their system. So okay. if you, um, let's say you're a big company and you have like, terabytes of data that's not in the AI, but it's like really important stuff for your business. You can teach this AI all of that stuff, keep it private, and now you can talk to it and it knows all of your data. So that can be incredible for companies doing like onboarding and that's wild. Mm -hmm. All of this was not possible three days ago. (laughs) And now I can say with confidence, that that feature is open to everybody who's paying for ChatGPT Plus. Yeah, you can make it too. You can make a GPT that helps assist with anything that you can think of. Um, they have like Tech Advisor. It's like one that helps you know advise tech people. We have one that can explain any board game and all the rules for it. So if you're ever playing a board game and you're like, hey, are you around? You know, are they allowed to roll a second time if it's this, this, this? And then this GPT is like, no, no, they can't do that. That's not how you play Uno. You know, it could like be the rule setter. So they have like. 15 of them that were made by OpenAI that are mm-hmm. like, you know, like the defaults that are in there. Mm-hmm. And then at the top it says, make your own. And I'm like, that's insane. You can just make your own thing. Yeah. And um, I, would, I would compare this to the people who made apps uh, in 2007 when the yeah. iOS app store yeah, opened yeah. up and people are like, whoa, you can make an app and people can sell it. Um, this is what this is like, but with AIs and they're, and they're um, OpenAI also announced if you make a GPT that's really popular, mm-hmm. you're, they're going to pay you. They're going to give you a revenue mm-hmm. share. Y'all hear that? If this was not enough motivation for you to get into chat GPT, I don't know what will be. That's crazy. Yeah, you get rev share. You're like, you know, I made a GPT. It's really helpful at teaching people about where the sun's going to be for photography. And let's mm-hmm. say a bunch of photographers use it and they love the tool. Um, I think you'll eventually start to be able to sell them for like, okay, my, my GPT is 99 cents. And then yeah. if a million people use it, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. People are like, oh, oh, I goodness. really need this. You know, I'm gonna use this every day. Like what apps are on your phone that you always use every day that aren't made by the phone? You know, mm-hmm. like I'm on Instagram all the time. Mm-hmm. I use that app for everything. Mm-hmm. They, didn't, they didn't make the phone that I'm using. So they made an app that stuck. Mm-hmm. They got in and it was valuable and useful. 
I think we're going to see the same thing in the next few months. You're Someone's right. going to make a GPT that's just like immensely useful that we can't really imagine yet. Someone's going to do it. And then people are like, oh, I don't do anything without consulting this GPT that was made by mm. this person that, you know. That is incredible. Yeah. So that's what's coming next. Or I guess it's already here. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. That's what's continuing to evolve at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So aside from everyone having a Jarvis, mm -hmm. you know, in the next five years, if we went 10 years down the line, whether it's flying cars or it's the end of the world, how do you see the world looking and being shaped by AI? I think we're going to see the world split up a little bit. Okay. Do say more. I think we're going to see some people that go deeper into AI and start integrating it into every part of their life. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see a large group of people that do the opposite and they want to be off grid and immersed mm -hmm. in nature. I think we're going to see that separation mm -hmm. happen because I don't think everyone's going to opt in. Um, I don't think everyone should have to either. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll, you know, in the next 10 years, you'll see like which people are want to integrate this to adapt and which ones want to repel it to adapt. Mm. Wow. That's a crazy thought, actually. That sounds like a movie. Mm. Maybe I'll make it. I'll ask GPT to help me write a yeah. script for that. <laughs> might as well. <laughs> you might as well create a, create a GPT that helps people to write movie scripts and take them into production. You should no. You should do that. You just you just called that. That could be one. What if I take that now? That's a great idea. It's on camera. So. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you call it. You should make that like immediately tonight. though tonight. On honestly, after this interview, I'm on it. Yeah. You make it. Share it with me. I'll tell everyone I know on Instagram about it. Be like, go use this, and then the Writers Guild will come after you. It will be so funny. And unexpected. Okay, this just got dark. <laughs> this is the end of the interview. No, but seriously, it was really great talking to you, Don. Likewise. Thank you so much for sharing so much about AI. I just, it's mind blowing to me. And I hope that you guys really take heed to what Don just shared. Tap in. And can you tell the people where they can find you and follow you and connect with you? It's the same spot. It's Don Allen III on Instagram. That's my main spot. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Have See a good ya. one.